five, four, three, two, one. Science holds the key to our survival as a planet. But science is cumulative. Modern science is the knowledge. Hello and welcome to our weekly science podcast, Science Overdose. My name is Ali and I'll be your host for today's show. This past week has brought us a ton of interesting scientific news. So without further ado, let's dig right in. Our first title is Sadness Alters Levels of Stress-Related Opioids. Opioids are neurotransmitters located in the brain. They increase the level of inflammatory proteins in the blood and in large quantities increase the risk of heart disease and strokes. Past studies have always shown that depression leads to other medical diseases, but researchers never knew why. So a team led by Alan Prossen, who has an MBBS, which is a Bachelor of Medicine and Surgery, decided to conduct an experiment on two groups of people. One group suffered from depression, and the other was a normal control group. Both groups were asked to think of something neutral, and we noticed a decrease in the level of opioids in both of these groups. Now, when asked to think of a sad event that occurred in their lifetime, both groups' opioid level increased, but there was a drastic increase in the opioid level of people that suffered from depression compared to the normal control group. A normal person, when under stress, releases opioids to reduce stress. But when the stress response is irregular, these neurotransmitters have a negative impact, as I previously talked about. Moving on, smoking bans versus tobacco taxes. An Ohio State University study found that banning smoking in public location works better for casual users, people who smoke a couple cigarettes a day, and that tobacco taxes work better for heavy users, people that smoke more than a pack a day, and that tobacco taxes work better for heavy users, people that smoke more than a pack a day. This study showed that people residing in city with bans have a 21% less likely chance to smoke compared to people who live in city with no tobacco bans. They also uncovered evidence that social smokers are usually influenced by their surroundings. Say they walk into a restaurant with their friends but realize they can't smoke. They'll probably choose to not smoke at all. But heavy smokers are usually not affected by this scenario. This is where tobacco taxes come in. Smoking bans may not affect them, but the economic costs of smoking due to tobacco taxes can put them off. So both smoking bans and tobacco taxes are both effective, but each have a particular target. Our next title, Candy Games Stimulate Appetite in Children. These are games, either desktop or mobile, that usually have a concealed advertisement plot behind their game, which, while it might not be obvious for children, is highly effective in attracting their attention. Research has shown that kids that play candy games have a 55% increase in their consumption of candy, and heavier children are even more sensitive to this problem as they already make unhealthy food choices. If you put an apple or a piece of candy in front of them, they'll most likely go for the piece of candy. So this leads to the worsening of their condition, and this creates a vicious circle. Now, manufacturers promise to change, and only time will tell. But the proper solution to this problem is an official government ban on all marketing targeting children. Moving on, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, tweeted that men have a harder time asking for help for depression. A recent survey on men showed that seeking help ranked 7.7 on 10, in their opinion, which, surprisingly, is equal to a survey conducted on women that showed the exact same results. But the difference arises with professional help seeking. Women recommended seeking professional help 8.5 times out of 10, while men 7.7 .7 times out of 10, same as before. This is due in large part to the stigma that struggling is weakness for men, 
and Dwayne Johnson is trying hard to reverse that notion. Because 60% of men and women find their depression symptoms reduce through short-term counseling. Almonds have been shown to be a great source of essential fatty acids, vitamin E, and magnesium. In a 14-week study conducted on 29 pairs of parents and children, children were given 0.5 ounces of almonds, while parents 1.5 ounces. And 1.5 ounces is around 30 almonds, which is around a scoopful. Towards the end of the study, the scientists noticed that they ate fewer empty calories, there was a decrease in sodium intake, and they consumed more vitamin E and magnesium. A form of bacteria called Acidithio bacillus feroxidans earns its energy through electricity, just as chlorophyllic plants through photosynthesis convert light into sugar and animals gain energy by taking electrons from substances in their environment, also known as chemosynthesis, which is converting carbon molecules into organic matter. These two types of energy gathering, phototrophs and chemotrophs, create a dual system. But these bacteria belong to a third system called electroecosystem, which is sustained by direct electric current. Christmas is coming in four days, and for the first time since 1977, we'll be experiencing a full cold moon. This full moon can be seen at 6.11 a.m. Eastern Time. And it won't happen again until 2034, so be sure not to miss it. And while on the topic of cold weather, we keep warm with hat and mittens. But for insects, it's not the same. They have trouble maintaining a water-salt balance. So when they get cold, sodium and water moves from their blood to their gut. This is bad news for the insect, because it concentrates potassium in their blood. Humans generate excess heat and retain it to stay warm. But insects take the same temperature as their environment. And so, a recent study showed that the Malpighian organ, similar to mammalian kidneys, is responsible for preserving the balance of salt and water in insects. This research will help scientists develop new ways of controlling insect pests. Scientists have found a new method to multiply teeth. As we know, 10% of people are born with missing teeth, and most of us lose some of our teeth due to disease or accidents. We can fix these problems with implants or bridges, but they are never as good as our original teeth. So a group of scientists led by Takashi Tsuji removed teeth germs from mice. They then grew these germs in a culture, and at a specific point in the development, around 14.5 days, sliced the germ in two with nylon thread, leaving a small portion behind. They then continued the culture, and the germs developed naturally into two teeth. They then transplanted the tooth into a hole drilled into the jaw of the mouse. Both teeth were fully functional. They both felt stimulus and were able to chew, but the teeth were half-sized and half-crown because researchers used already developed germs. They said that there are still barriers that need to be overcome. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for updates.